Do not worry. Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to episode 12 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut in Jayatewe. Folks, I'm more shocked than anyone else that we have gotten to episode 12. Who would have thunk it? I definitely would not have. Uh, before we get into anything, I got a free gift. I got like, it's not like a sponsorship or anything, but I would like to say thank you to the people at the network, the network Lebanon, for sending me this pair of Sennheiser headphones. I'm gonna, I know what you guys are thinking. Anthony, you're a sellout. We're going to talk about that in one of the segments. I really did want to say thank you to Vanessa and Eli. It was very nice to get a gift. Like they reached out after they saw last week's episode. They're like, Anthony, we saw you using those pathetic Marshall 3s. And I was like, actually, they were Marshall 2s. Try to make myself look a little bit more pathetic. They're like, we'd love to send you some free headphones. So they did. We'll get into that a little bit later. But thank you guys so much. It was very nice of you. The Network, Lebanon, check them out. Show them some love so they can keep sending me some free stuff. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you for the headphones. Make sure to like this video. Leave a comment. Your engagement, hashtag engagement, has been fucking crazy helpful. Folks, we have made it to 2,000 subscribers. We have crossed the 2,000 subscriber mark. Thank you guys so much. It is all thanks to you. Thank you for sharing on Instagram. Thank you for sharing it on Twitter. Seriously, every share, every comment, every like, all of that stuff adds up and it really makes a difference. I could not have done this without you guys. So thank you so much. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, click that subscribe button. Become a do not warrior. By the way, I wanted to correct something really quickly. You guys are very sweet when you share it on Instagram and stuff and you're like, we're a do not warrior. It's a do not warrior with an A. Now with an O, with an A. All right, do not warrior, not warrior. All right, I know it sounds confusing, but with an A. Folks, we've got a lot of interesting topics today. We're going to be talking about sponsorships and, and sellouts and influencers and getting stuff for free and what that can do to your credibility. I'm going to be talking about this amazing human being called Yasmina Abu Sulaiman, who did something amazing via her Instagram, and um, it's very fucking emotional. Uh, we're going to talk about some jackass called Yusuf Sulaiman, allegedly. I can't prove it. Got to just protect myself on these videos. This alleged jackass and his very casually racist video. And he's very popular on TikTok. That's the only reason why I'm going for him. And uh, the final 20 minutes of this episode is a conversation with Anis Tabit, Lebanon's favorite movie critic. We're talking about the cinema industry and like basically how ravaged it got last year with COVID. So uh, it's a very interesting conversation. Anis is one of my favorite people. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, let's get kicked off. So the first topic I want to talk about isn't uh, necessarily really a full topic, but I just wanted to discuss the fallout of the Rena Randur video. So last week uh, I dropped uh, the Who the Fuck is Rena Randur video. And uh, I went to bed that day, like Thursday night. The video had about 120 likes, zero dislikes. I woke up in the morning to 170 something likes and 87 dislikes and like 30 or 40 comments all posted within like 30 minutes to an hour of each other, all attacking me, calling me a bully, etc., defending Rena, all that sort of thing. Which again is fine, I don't mind, I don't mind the dislikes, all of that sort of thing. It's all extra engagement, hashtag engagement. So thank you guys for the extra comments and dislikes. And then all of you amazing Do Not Warriors jumped into the comments and started defending. Anthony, you defended my honor, so I love you guys, thank you. I don't mind these fucking idiots in their comments. But it was just like, it's just stressful sometimes to do, to, to wake up to this stuff. I had something similar happen to me after the Pierre Rabat episode, like episode nine or something. I woke up the next morning, I had talked about Pierre Rabat in that video and I had talked about Tufiluk and I had talked about Novel Corona. I woke up in the morning and I found an 1,500, so 1,500 fake followers uh, in, on Instagram, on my Instagram. And later that day, I got an extra 500 fake followers. So like someone sent 2000 fake followers to my Instagram page. But like clearly there are some targeted attacks and like there are WhatsApp groups. Like for example, for Rina, I'm not sure, but like there was probably some like WhatsApp group or some fan group. I don't even know if she ever saw the video. Maybe it's just one of her, you know, I don't know, man, communities on Instagram or some kind of fan page. They just sent like a mass text like, hey, click on that video and dislike it. It's just stressful. I'm just trying to say it's sometimes stressful to wake up the next morning not knowing what's going to happen because of these damn videos. I just wish people were a bit more mature and could just take this stuff on the chin. Like if you're going to be a public figure and if you're going to be an asshole in public, expect to get some shit, man. All right, don't fuck with me. Don't don't hate the messenger, man. Don't fucking shoot me. <sighs> but I mean, these are very small things to complain about. Thank you guys for watching it. It's actually the most viewed episode so far. And like it, it's just, I don't know, it kind of puts a little bit of pressure because I... There's not always going to be some crazy drama every week, so 
I sometimes stress out about like, are you guys going to watch the next episode? Like, to, honestly, to me, every episode I'm about to drop, I have like a mini panic attack that it's going to fucking tank and no one's going to watch it. Like, I'm legit shocked that people watch my fucking podcast. You guys don't understand. I'm like shocked every time that an episode doesn't completely flop. So uh, let's see. In my mind, this episode is completely going to flop. But anyways. Okay, guys. So as I was saying at the beginning of the episode, I got a free pair of a Sennheiser headphones right here uh, from the good people over at Network LB. And I'm gonna read you guys like the, the message, the DM they sent me. I'm gonna walk you guys through this whole fucking thing. Okay, and we're gonna talk about sponsorships, getting stuff for free, selling out, all that sort of thing. So, hey Anthony, hope you're doing well. We are The Network, a startup business handling audio and events. Congrats on your channel. We think your podcasts are really cool. Lola Bunny is sure hot as hell. I agree. Uh, also notice you're using the Marshall Major 3 headset and would like to give you an upgrade. Send us a delivery address where we can drop off your new toy. So that was the message I got. And I eagerly replied by saying that I don't even have Marshall 3s, I have Marshall 2s. I was trying to make myself look even more pathetic, but I was happy to accept them. And uh, they're very nice people. The, the, the headphones got delivered like to my house today in person by Vanessa and Eli, two very nice guys. It came with this little like handwritten note that Vanessa wrote and it says, congrats on your, uh, congrats on your new editing headphones, Sennheiser D206, are monitoring headphones with an almost flat response for more accurate editing. The on-ear cushions and its lightweight make it uh, perfect for long hours of studio time. Keep it up with the witty content, the network. Um, and just to give you guys a little bit of information about like who the network is, as the DM said, they handle audio and events. And on their Instagram page, it says the network, it's an arts and entertainment page. They do sale and integration of audio systems, sound system rental, stage design, branding and design, DJ bookings, DJ school, etc. And they also sell like, for example, they sell MIDI uh, controllers, mini MIDI controllers, like for example, the Axiom. Like I have one of those things. Like I have the Novation uh, MIDI uh, launch key mini which I used to like try to create music. I don't know how to play music, but I, I'm trying to, and I'm, I love Mark Rebier. So like kind of got one of these to try to be a dollar store version of Mark Rebier. But if you're into that kind of thing, I guess they sell that sort of stuff. So check them out on Instagram, give them a follow. Like I'm very appreciative. Thank you guys again for the awesome uh, gift. I'll be using it. I'm like, it got me thinking, you know, am I, do I become a sellout? And I, I, I made a joke on Twitter that I'm officially a sellout now that I have, I got offered something, but it really, to me, it depends. Like if you're going to be sent, if you're in my position now where you're starting to get a little bit of success and a little bit of online notoriety and some people might want to send you something or have you promote something on, um, on your page or something. In my mind, the way I see it, if it's relevant to what I do, if it doesn't ruin or hurt my credibility, I see no harm in it. For example, I needed a new pair of headphones, like my Marshall 2s. I fucking love them. They've been awesome. I've had them for like three years, but they're extremely kind of tight. So if I wear them for long periods of time, I end up getting like kind of a headache. My ears start hurting. Uh, I wear glasses as well. So they're not that comfortable for long periods of time. So if I'm editing video, which sometimes takes me up to like three or four hours for a longer video, I need something like this. So the fact that they sent, they offered to send something that I could use that was extremely relevant to what I do, Great. Also, they didn't force me to say anything about them. They didn't ask anything. I'm just being courteous. And, you know, they sent me something that, that is pretty fucking awesome. So I'm just being nice and I'm, you know, I'm going to give them a little shout out, you know? Does that mean I'm going to work with every single brand or startup or business that offers to send me something for free? Not really. Again, if it's not relevant to what I do, if it's not something that I need, if it's not something that would make sense given, like, for example, I have tattoos, okay? If a tattoo aftercare company contacts me and they're like, hey, we have this tattoo aftercare cream or oil that we'd like to send you, I'd probably say yes because I have tattoos. That's a product that would probably be interesting to me. I genuinely would want to talk about it to my audience if it's something that I like and if I felt that it's something that helps me. I made a joke on my Instagram that if I ever get to 10K followers, that'll be the perfect time to do the uh, teeth thing with the blue light, the purple light that whitens your teeth because like all the influencers kind of do it. And they actually reached out to me. I forgot their name again. They actually reached out to me and were like, hey, well, I mean, hilarious joke, but like, if you want, we can actually send it to you. I was like, guys, I, I can't. Like, I floss my teeth once a month. I'm not going to sit here and lecture you guys about like taking care of your teeth. What I'm trying to say is that I'm not always going to say yes. I've been offered to show up on TV a couple of times already. I know, fucking crazy. But I've said no, because again, it, it wasn't relevant to 
my brand to who I am, to what I want to do. So I'm not here to just like fucking get sponsorships and, and try to sell you stuff and try to shove sh shit down your throat. Like I'm already like my Instagram is already a just promotional page for my podcast. I'm constantly shoving my podcast down your throat. I don't want to be shoving other shit down your throat. Like watch my podcast, wear these t-shirts, drink this juice, play these games. Like I know we're all going through a lot. None of us have any fucking money. So like, I'm not going to try to be like, you know, I know what it feels like I've, I unfollowed so many of these pages that just constantly post stuff and they're tagging brands and companies and they're wanting to sell you makeup and fucking hair products and shit. Again, if it's something like right now, I'm fucking, I bleached my hair. If someone wants to send me some conditioner for free, sure, I guess it's relevant. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. I know I'm with you guys. So what I'm trying to say is I might be accepting some things from time to time. And if some, and if some brands want to sponsor me, look, guys, I'm fucking unemployed. I'm trying to, to, to keep a roof over my head here. Okay. A man needs to earn. A man needs to make some cheese. I need some bread. All right. To me, it always goes back to just credibility. You know what I mean? And look, eventually I'm going to have to fucking monetize this thing. I'm going to have to do sponsorships. Eventually I make no money off of this podcast. The only way to make money is via sponsorships. Or if I do something like a Patreon, which I eventually do want to do. And if I do have a Patreon, you guys are my boss. I work for you guys. Whoever pays me every month, I will answer to you. You will be my boss. But as of yet, I, I make no money off of this podcast. So eventually, if a sponsorship opportunity comes along that makes sense with a brand that makes sense with a product that makes sense, something that I like, something that I use, uh, why not? And you guys, I would hope that you guys will trust me enough. And it's on me. It's on me to build that trust with you guys. So hopefully... Um, I mean, you guys watch my podcast. I'm a pretty open book. I don't really hide anything. I don't want to become like an influencer. And if I do influence anyone, I want it to be by happenstance. By like, if I'm wearing a t-shirt that you like and you decide to go buy it, great, do that. I don't want to tag the company of the t-shirt and like, here, buy it and use my link and get a 10% off. Like, but like, I, I don't want to sell anyone anything is what I'm trying to say. So y'all can trust me. Thanks again, network. So this next topic is a feel great story. Also got me very emotional yesterday. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already come across this. It is a video that was published on Instagram by Yasmina Abu Sulaiman. Never met her. I don't know this girl, uh, but she seems like an incredible human being. Before I get into anything, let's just watch the video together. Uh, she shared this, I think two days ago or one day ago on Instagram. Um, amazing story. Let's just check it out. It is incredibly emotional. Ooh, very comfortable headphones, by the way. Hey, um, I don't usually do this kind of stuff, but I really, really need your guys' help. So, um, recently I've been diagnosed with the illness of Hodgkin's. Um, I'm doing really, really well. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have such a great support system behind me between my family, my friends, my coworkers, and my amazing, amazing doctor. And yeah, I'm starting chemo next week and I'm doing really, really good. Um, unfortunately, there are some people here in Lebanon who aren't as lucky as I am and aren't able to afford their treatment. It must be so hard to like, wake up one day and get sick out of the blue and not be able to afford your treatment especially after everything that's happened in lebanon this year so i've decided to start a fundraiser um the donation links are going to be in my bio and in the comment section down below and uh yeah all of the donations are gonna go to uh, people to help people uh, get treated in Lebanon and that's it <laughs> I just want to thank in advance anyone who's going to donate it truly truly means the world to me so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and for anyone who can donate if you could please share the video so we can get as many people to donate as possible so yeah Thank you all again so much, and I hope to see you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, so it's very difficult to watch this and not tear up. Like I'm fighting back tears right now. Uh, I I am I have fallen in love with this lady. Uh, 
metaphorically, theoretically, but um, what a beautiful, beautiful human being. Um, what a beautiful soul uh, to be so unselfish. Like, do, like she just got, okay, so she just got diagnosed with cancer. And the first thing she thinks to do is to set up a fundraiser for other people to pay for their treatment. Um, I mean, A, it makes all of us look very bad. Like, I haven't done shit to help people, at least not like that. I'm tearing up right now, man. It's just very hard to, I don't know. It's very inspirational. I'm, I'm I can't even speak. Um, okay, so if you look at the fundraiser, uh, so she had a goal of ten thousand dollars. So that has increased to okay. So I can barely fucking talk. She wanted to raise ten thousand dollars. She has raised in like two fucking days forty six thousand. And eight hundred and forty-two dollars. That is as of this recording. Out of a fifty thousand goal, so she started with a goal of just ten thousand dollars, and her video went so fucking viral that she's raised forty-six fucking thousand dollars, and she's well on her way to raise that fifty thousand dollars. And I hope more. I hope this keeps going. And if by any chance you you can donate, and if you haven't seen this link and you haven't seen this video yet, um, please donate. I don't know, man. She's fucking amazing. Like Lebanese people can be really shitty at times and when you look at our politicians you really lose faith in our people but then you see people like Yasmina and um, they're so fucking amazing and they make you proud not just to be Lebanese but like she, she's a great human being you know what I mean she's just a great fucking human being and um, in a time of hardship for her and her family to be so incredibly unselfish and to put everyone else forward. And like she keeps reassuring people like I'm doing great. I have a great doctor, my friends, my family, my support system. She keeps reassuring us that she's going to be OK. I don't know, man. I love everything about this person, everything about her video. Um, if you can donate, please donate. Um, she's inspiring me to honestly try to do something. If I can if I can raise a fraction of what she's raised, man, I'll be like the happiest guy on earth. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but um, this is just if I can just to help right now if anyone can donate and click on that link that would be already incredible so um thank you yasmin i hope i I, th I think the whole it's safe to say the whole fucking country is pulling for you uh the whole world is pulling for you um salam tik we're gonna take a sharp left turn folks and i apologize in advance we're gonna go from the story of the amazing and and beautiful soul yasmina to the dumpsters of Lebanese social media and content. A man by the name of Yusuf Saman. Uh, he's very popular on TikTok. Let me let me check his page. So on TikTok, that motherfucker's got 77.3k followers, 1.6 million likes. Uh, he's not big on Instagram, and his page is private. So like, I think he knows he's kind of an asshole. I don't even know if he still has a Twitter. To be honest with you, I did not want to research him a lot because he's fucking cringe as hell. His content is horrible. And like I figured I can go for him because he's pretty fucking huge on TikTok. So it's not really. And his content is real garbage. So I, I want to point it out. But please don't go after him. Don't like bully him or anything like that. So let's watch his video. He, he just dropped like something that is extremely racist and casually racist in a way that us Lebanese are very casually racist. Let's watch it. Then I'll kind of talk about him, his stupid video and um, like racism in Lebanon kind of. But um, he, he has a lot of cringy fucking videos about like picking up girls and shit. He's, he's fucking horrible, but yeah. Let us, ooh, very, again, these, these headphones are so comfortable and lightweight. وقفت اليوم على ترمبة التوتال بدي اعبي بنزين ومثل ما بتعرفوا انتو انه هلا في تقنين على ترمبة التوتال فما بيعبي لك اكتر من عشرين او ثلاثين الف وصلت على ترمبة قلت له للبنجلاتش الواقف على ترمبة بدي اعبي بنزين قال لي قد ايه بدك تعبي معلم قلت له فولا ام شو قال لي قال لي شركي ما في شركي بس ثلاثين الف عبي تفويل ما في قلت له صديق زبط قال لي تكرم عينك انا بزبط اذا انت زبطني طلعت فيه قلت له انا زبطك قال لي زبط انت انا زبط قلت له تكرم عينك فول لي اياها ب 121000 واعطيته 5000 ليره All right, so this dumpster of a human being, uh, Yusuf Saman 95 on TikTok. So yeah, that's the guy's level when it comes to the content that he creates on his social media. We, we have this thing as Lebanese where we tend to think we are, we have this 
the superiority complex where I don't know where the fuck it comes from. Uh, we think we're better than all of our neighboring uh, Arabs. We think we're better than people from Sri Lanka. We think we're better than people from Ethiopia. We think we're better from people from, from the Philippines. Anyone who comes to work here or is like a domestic worker, we think we're 10 times better than them. We think we're better than Egyptians. We think we're better than Syrians. We think we're better than everyone. Like when people hire people to, to, to paint in their homes, sometimes they'll refer to them like, yeah, like, why would you call him that? Why would you say I got a Syrian to paint my house? Why wouldn't you say I got some guy to paint my house? And hey, he just so happens to be Syrian. We label people, we label people by their race. I'm sorry if some people disagree with me, that's how it fucking is. And we think we're this fucking amazing fucking gift from God, you know, a gift from the heavens, Lebanese people. You know what happens when you tell a foreigner you're from Lebanon? You know, if you go to the States and you tell like a 50 year old white lady you're from Lebanon, you want to know what their reaction is? Oh, 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 Lebanon, I'm so sorry, honey. Are you okay? Is your family okay? Oh, I'm so sorry. Lebanon was such a beautiful place, but oh, Beirut, huh? Ooh, that blast was a really bad, huh? Ooh. That's how people react, bro. People feel bad for us. Our country, we are literally drowning in our own garbage, in our own shit, our economies, in the fucking toilet. We have no jobs. We've got no money to buy any fucking food. It's literally, it's a shit show. It's a fucking shit show. Our beaches are covered in fucking oil. Like the con it's literally, we are a piece of garbage country. Yet this guy, ha and like he's making fun of a guy who's doing a, a fucking essential job. People who work at gas stations, people who work at restaurants, all anyone who works in like the service industry right now, also during COVID, like they don't need your fucking dumb, ignorant ass to make fun of them, bro. Okay, you should be fucking thanking this guy. All right, who's working here for almost no money now. Like, if you think he's happy to be in fucking Lebanon, he'd much rather be in fucking Bangladesh right now, bro. Whatever money he's getting paid to fucking work at a gas station now is fucking worthless. He's not happy to be here fucking putting gas in your fucking car, you lame fucking piece of shit. And I'm so sick of seeing your fucking videos trending all over fucking Twitter, all right? Because people are making fun of him generally, by the way. No one fucking likes this guy on Twitter. And by the way... By the way, 77.3k followers? Who the fuck are these idiots following you? Who the fuck? I'm calling you fucking dumbasses out. Yusuf Simhan 95 what a fucking jackass. Your content is shit. You racist little piece of shit. You creepy fucking... I don't know, you're a fucking creep, all right? Allegedly, supposedly, whatever. Uh, horrible content. Racist piece of garbage. I don't know what else to say. I just really hope we step off this fucking pedestal we've we've put ourselves on as Lebanese people fucking wake up to the fact that we are just like everyone else if not worse I mean we're all everyone's the fucking same you know what I mean but this whole fucking superiority thing like we all all we're good at now is running away to other fucking countries to try to make our lives there let's not fucking kid ourselves we fucked up our own country we completely fucked this shit up so uh show some fucking respect and like the way he's making fun of his accent and the way he mentions that he only gave him five thou at the end to just hint that like he fucking tricked him and like he got him to cheat for just a little bit of money because he's a what a what a fucking asshole all right so uh this morning i got to do a zoom uh chat with anis uh, one of my favorite people uh here in lebanon we got to talk about the cinema industry in lebanon so uh i'm just here to transition you into i was wearing a different t-shirt in the morning all right the lighting is a little bit different uh but check out the interview and uh yeah enjoy Folks, we are joined by Anis Stabit. I haven't seen Anis in person in like a year, I want to say at least. Has it been longer, Anis? But you guys all know Anis. He is Lebanon's foremost movie critic. He is the most popular, most famous movie critic we have. He is a national treasure as far as I'm concerned. He is a movie expert and movie lover, TV expert and TV lover. I thought I would bring him on for today to ask him a few questions about the industry, like the movie industry, the cinema industry as a whole. As you know, all over the world, movie theaters have been closed because of COVID, because of a lot of different reasons. So I wanted to ask, Anis, first of all, how are you doing? Hey, Anthony, I'm good. Habib, nice to see you. Nice you I'm going uh, well, to... For the audience, by the way, for anyone listening or watching, I'm going to be speaking in English primarily. Anis is going to be speaking Arabic, English. She's going to go back and forth in between them. So just... Un peu de français aussi. Un peu de français aussi, ça fait jamais, ça fait jamais mal. Uh, Anis, can I, wanted, I wrote down some questions for you, uh, and I might read them just okay. so that I, I don't fuck up my wording. But as a movie industry insider, and as someone with close ties to film distributors, to movie theaters, etc., how devastating has this past year been on the movie industry, on the cinema industry in Lebanon? And what kind of damage has been done so far? 
هي مان اتس بين هوربل صراحه مشان الديستريبيوترز ومشان السينمايات هلا مثل ما بتعرف هون بلبنان الديستريبيوترز الادفانتج اللي عندهم اياه انه عندهم كمان ماركت بالدول العربيه سو تكنيكلي وقت فتحوا بالدول العربيه شوي كانوا عم يقدروا يمشوا حالهم يعودوا شوي الخساره اللي عم يخسروها هون بلبنان لانه هون ما في غير الفوكس فتحوا ان بتوين مارش 2020 ومارش 2021 يعني ما في غير فوكس عم يفتحوا لسبب واحد لانه فوكس هن بارت اوف مجد فود تايم اللي هن عندهم سيتي سنتر سو تكنيكلي قادرين شوي يكونوا افيلبل وفاتحين بس غير سينمايات اللي هن لوكال سينماز عم نحكي جراند سينماز امباير عندهم اذا بدك دفعات يعني عندهم اجارات بيدفعوا للمولات عندهم اكيد بيدفعوا مصفينهم سو so تكنيكلي ما كان في برودكت كبير يحمسهم انه بدنا نفتح نحن السينمايات سو so اكيد كانت خساره كبيره هلا ما في بروفيت ما في شيء سو uh, اضطروا so انه يسكروا كومبليتلي uh, صار لهم سنه ما عم يطلعوا شيء uh, وكان ديفستيتنج كثير على على السيكتور صراحه و, uh, وبعدنا هلا ماشيين يعني بعد هلا ما حدا فتح yeah. يعني يعني ذات مينز كل الموظفين ذا The, the people who work for at the snack bar, the people who get the tickets, the, the people who operate yes. the cinema, they, they operate the uh, the projectors. Holy, كل العالم بلا شغل سلون سنة basically. سنة. You mentioned is Vox Cinemas currently open? يعني هلا إذا حدا ما يروح يحضر فين ب Vox بيقدر يحضر فين ب Vox مفتوحين هلا. هلا لا فتحوا إذا بدك شوي بالصيفية بتذكر وقت نزلوا مولان. Yes. September. There was a brief period. Uh, exactly, exactly. فتح فتحوا كرمال مولان لانه فكروا انه يمكن العالم تتحمس تجي على السينما. ما كثير عمل اذا بدك الارقام بالبوكس اوفيس اللي كانوا متوقعينها ورجعوا فتحوا شوي صوب صوب كريسماس ونيو يير كان نازل وقتها فيلم سول تبع بيكسار. Yes. Uh, بس كمان بس بس كمان ما كثير عمل الارقام اللي هن كانوا بدهم اياها تنعمل. بس كانوا فاتحين فوكس يعني كذا مره كانوا يفتحوا ويسكروا هلا مع اللوك داون من اول سنه لهلا بعد هلا ما فتحوا صار اذا بدك شيء 3 مانث مسكرين كومبليتلي وناطرين يعني بعد لهلا ما في قرار من الدوله مش كان اذا بيفتحوا ولا لا يعني سو so بعدهم كمان مش شايفين حالهم شو بدهم يعملوا. بس يو منشند انه ذا فاكت ذات ذير اوبريتنج اوفرسيز هول ديستريبيوترز اتس بين ايبل تو اوف سيت شويه من الخساره يعني if they were only operating in Lebanon كانوا اكلوا خرا let's just say it the way it is they would have not survived اكيد اكيد بس the fact اكيد فينا can... نقول كانوا اكلوا خرا هون على <تصفيق> الشو تبعك فينا اكيد نستعمل هذا اللانجويج لانه عن جد كانوا اكلوا خرا هلا ك ك وورنر ك ك اذا بدك امباير ك ايطاليا فيلمز عندهم ماركت كبير بال... بالسعوديه بدبي yeah. وبالكويت كمان هونيك بلشوا يفتحوا شوي شوي يعني هلا رح نحكي بعد شوي عن غودزيلا فيرسس كونغ ونفهم شوي اكثر شو عم بيصير. Exactly. Before we get to that, كمان بدي اسالك because انت كمان انيس you are an industry professional. انت you work very closely with the movie theaters, with the distributors to help promote the movies. You're a big movie marketer and promoter. يعني لإلك كمان this year has been devastating. Give us شوية insight into how bad it's been for you as a film professional and as an industry professional. How bad has this year been for you on a personal level? انا اللي اللي بيعرفني وانت بتعرفني انا كنت اشتغل بالفارماسيوتيكال اندستري واشتغلت سبع سنين فيها وانا هذا الدومين تبعي انا عامل بيولوجي بالجامعه سو uh, so بس تركت الاندستري تنط على شيء انا حابب اعمله اللي هو السينما والماركتينج وبروموشن والسوشيال ميديا كل هالقصص اشتغلنا يعني كان في عن جد جولدن يير اذا بدك بين 2017 ل 2019 كان كل شيء بيعقد وايه وقت بلشت البانديميك يعني كل شيء سكر و يعني مثل كانه واحد اكل كف يعني ما بيفهم <تصفيق> بالاخر و... وانا انا اون ا بيرسونال ليفل انا ايه كثير تضررت يعني انا مثل كل العالم اللي بالاندستري ما ما في بقى شغل ناطرين يمكن مثل غيرنا شو بده يصير واكيد اثرت علينا منتلي كمان يعني بعرف انت حكيت هذيك المره ابيزود طويل عن المنتل اذا بدك افكت تبع البانديميك اكيد بتصير هيك يعني بتبلش اول شيء انه مفكر الخبريه ابو شهر شهرين بعدين بتلاقي انه لا لونج تيرم وبتبلش تاثر عليك نفسيا كمان لانه انت بتكون انه كنت كابس كل حياتك وعم تعمل اذا بدك شيء انت بتحبه وهيك اوت اوف نو كل شيء بيسكر لا اكيد اثرت علي كثير يعني Uh, بس هلا شوي في شويه هوب مع الفاكسينز وكبيولوجيست بتحمس العالم يروح يعملوا فاكسينز اكيد لانه بفتكر هذا الشغله الوحيده اللي حتخلصنا 
Aki, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I wanted to ask this question. And I know, and it, people are watching, you know, from overseas. I want to give people insight, addition, be killing industries. And like, I'm still a little hospitality industry. I want, I just want to let people know that this is real, that anyone can be affected in the behind the scenes of the movies and stuff like that. I know it is important to let people know what we're going through on a daily basis. And you're, I'm a single guy until you're married, you have a house, you have responsibilities, way more responsibilities than I have. So and it's, I can only imagine a dish. It's stressful. And I lost my job two months ago and I work in TV. I mean, like, she TV and, and shootings got delayed with Ejalo, with Kansalo. So uh, many of us are in the same Marif, boat, Marif. unfortunately. Well, thank you for sharing. Marif. Hey, man, I like how you can talk about the topic, especially from the episode you did about mental health and everything that we're doing here. It's not just that one person is sitting here and you also have everything that's going on in the country. It's not that one person. I said, anyone who follows you on Twitter knows that your mental health has been steadily declining for the past year. I think whoever follows you on Twitter, we know what you're feeling, <laughs> which is great. By the way, you should follow Anis on Twitter. I'm going to have all the links for Anis in the description below. One, one more question. Hey man, hey man, man. بعرف من الوحيد بس إنه ما أنا هيني. هذا هذا. We have to vent somehow. بس هلا كنا عم نحكي عن Godzilla vs Kong. There's a sign of hope. Yes. Godzilla vs Kong هلا فتح worldwide and it made over 120 million dollars in its opening weekend globally, not counting the United States. That has given hope to a lot of film distributors, theater owners, and okay, when we open these big movies again, there is an appetite for it. يعني does that exactly. give, uh, so does that give you Hope, يعني نحن هلا بلبنان عم نعمل فاكسين بس الفاكسين رول اوت عنا ابطا بكثير من غير بلاد يعني. By the time people our age get the vaccine, I have no idea if we're ever going to get it. But disons, we keep going down the rate we're going. Do you anticipate cinemas يفتحوا بلبنان in a few months given what's happening with the vaccine? Looking at what's happening overseas with movies like Kong versus Godzilla, and في شوي there is a hunger to go back to the movies. Do you think this is a good <laughs> وورنر جربوا بتنت الصيفيه هذيك السنه اذا بتتذكر جربوا انه بدنا ننزل تنت لنشوف شو بده يصير وصراحه ما اشتغل مثل ما هن كانوا مفكرين حيشتغل صح آه وهذا كان اول اول فيلم لكريستوف نولان هالقد بيكون وات الارقام تبعه اكيد بس جودزيلا فيرسس اي نو نو جو اهيد جو اهيد جودزيلا فيرسس كونغ اذا بدك هو اول ساين اوف هوب انه انه معقوله السينمايات ترجع فيري سون سبيشلي مع الفاكسين رول اب اكيد مثل ما عم بتقول ااا مبين انه عم يشتغل منيح اوفرسيز وبالدول العربيه كمان بلش يشتغل الفيلم يعني معناتها العالم عم بتروح على السينمايات واصلا بالسعوديه حتى ديورينج ذا بانديميك يعني بنص دين البانديميك كانوا العالم عم تروح على السينماز سو في ساين اوف هوب انه بس يجي برودكت كبير مثل جودزيلا مثل كونغ فيرسز جودزيلا جودزيلا فيرسز كونغ ما بعرف ليش عم شقلب في في ابيتايت للاودينسز انه يرجعوا على ال على السينماز ويحضروا افلام كبيره وانت بتعرف انه هلا من بعد هذا الفيلم في كثير افلام رح تنزل يعني عم نحكي سوسايد سكواد نازل جيمس بوند نازل بلاك ويدو مورتال كومبات عندك عندك اسامي كبيره كثير حتنزل هلا بلبنان الكيس شوي اصعب من غيره لانه بس بيوند البانديميك عندك كمان مشكله الايكونوميك كرايسيس اللي عم نقطع فيها ذاتس فيري امبورتنت بليز جيف اس انسايت لانه نحن ديجا الفاكسان و ذاتس بينج سلو هيدا مشكله لحالها بس نحن عندنا مشكله ثانيه بلبنان مثل ما عم تقولوا الايكونوميك كرايسيس وات هاو ار ذي غانا ديل وذ ذات هلا بس تقول لك شغله انه انه السورسز تبعوا اللي بيقولوا انه اذا حيجا يفتح السينمايات تنقول اذا فتحوا بجون جولاي فيلم مثل جودزيلا فيس كونغ حيرجع ينزل بالسينما يعني حينزلوا الافلام يلي قطعت اوكي قبل وحطوها okay. على البيك سكرين لانه بفتكر ما فيهم اصلا يعملوا غير هيك يعني بدهم يحمسوا العالم ترجع على السينما هلا المشكله المشكله الثانيه اللي عم نقطع فيه هو اكيد الكرايسيس يعني نحن بتعرفوا كل العالم بتعرف الكرنسي تبعيتنا ما ستيبل ابدا سو تكنيكلي ما بنعرف شو راح يصير بالاسعار التيكتس علما انه السينماز هن اذا بدك البروفيت تبعهم بيعملوه مالي من الـ من البوب كورنز من, من البيبسي ما بدنا نعمل دعايه بس انه من من, من, هال من من هالقصص يعني من الناتشوز وهالاخبار يعني مش بس التيكت السينما عم نحكي عم نحكي كمان قديش حيصير اسعار الكونسيشنز كمان سو تكنيكلي شوي شوي نحن السيتويشن تبعتنا تريكي هلا لانه ما بنعرف بعد كل هالقصص شو بده يصير فيهم يعني اليوم اوكي كان حقه تيكت السينما 15000 اذا دوبه رح يصير حقه 30 بضلوا شوي افوردبل بس اذا نطينا بيوند هالرقم 
هل هالعالم حتضل تروح على السينما؟ هيدا السؤال اكيد لازم نطرحه و just to, just as a disclaimer يعني نحن انا وانيس we're not here to criticize movie theaters بالعكس we understand it's a business they need to make money اذا لازم يغلوا مش حق عليهم uh, they need to pay their employees they need to pay bills they need to pay rent في عندهم 100 شغله بدهم يدفعوها running a movie theater is extremely expensive and the profit margins are very low مثل ما مثل ما قال انيس yes movie theaters make most of their money على السناكس اللي بيبيعوهم so uh, and i understand that they're going to have to raise their prices but the question becomes Yeah, it, hopefully they don't raise them to a point where it becomes a luxury when the only people who can afford to go to the movies yeah, the best, it, what do you say, Lebanon? it's so hard to predict and I, I have a business I sell comic books the comic stash and I can issue my comic books for dollars and I used to sell them now I have no idea how to charge and how to price my stuff because if I sell stuff for less than what I bought it for so um, I understand on the surface بين از الواحد وقت حدا بده يعلي الاسعار بس كمان يو هاف تو انديرستاند ذات ذير نوت دوينغ ات اوت اوف جريد سم تايمز بيبل دو ات اوت اوف جريد بس انه كمان هون الوضع كثير صعب ذي نيد تو ميك ماني ذي نيد تو بي بروفيتبل سو ذات ذي كان كيب هايرينغ بيبل سو ذات ذي كان كيب رننج ذير بزنس هلا هلا السينما كانت دائما ارخص من حي غير دارة يعني من ايام زمان يعني حتى وقت غلوا شوي التيكتس من زمان يعني بتتذكر كان يمكن التيكت حقه 5000 يا yeah. قبل 10000 كان حقه شي 5000 بعدين 7000 ذا واز 7000 شوي شوي صار يعلى لحديد اذا بدك الاي ماكس حقه يمكن شي 20000 بس هلا ديفنتلي ما راح يضلوا 20000 وبنفهمهم يعني للسينمائيات يعني اذا دوبلوا سعرهم وصارت الاي ماكس 40000 والتيكت العادي 30000 بضلك شوي وذن ذا رينج تبع مش انه صنع شي لوجري يعني يا yeah, yeah. uh, بس اجين اجين كله كله بيوقف على الـ على الكرنسي وشو راح يصير بعد شهرين ثلاثه ما بنعرف اجين اجين على الدولار كثير عم يطلع وينزل بدنا ننطر شوي بس نشوف شو 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 بده يصير ان شاء الله hopefully things get clearer because there's a lot of fucking fun movies that we want to watch وانا كمان عم بلش لك عم حكيك بس بدي اسالك شيء now the fact that we صرنا سنه بالبيت everyone's at home HBO عم بينزلوا فلومه مثل كونغ غودزيلا vs كونغ ديزني بلس عم بينزلوا سول ورايا اند ذا لاست دراجون اون ذير ستريمينغ سيرفيسز بيبول تعودوا صار لهم سنه بالبيت عم بيحضروا بيج بيج موفي ريليسز بالبيت عم بيحضروا شوز على ديزني بلس مثل وان ديفيجن فالكون اند ذا وينتر سولجر ذات لوك اند فيل لايك موفيز لانه الكواليتي از فيري هاي دو يو ثينك كثير عالي دو يو ثينك ذات از غونا هاف يعني هلا وقت يرجعوا يفتحوا السينمايات بتحس العالم رح تتردد or people are going to hesitate to go back to the movies like you know what I've been home for a year بلا سينما I don't need to go back or do you think the Kong vs Godzilla numbers prove that we want to go back to the movies it doesn't matter how big your TV is it doesn't compare to a fucking cinema or IMAX screen ما هيك؟ exactly especially بهيك افلام يعني عم نحكي blockbusters مثل مثل كونغ مثل سوسايد uh, سكواد العالم اصلا ما في حدا حكيت معه كان يروح على السينما كثير ما قال لي انه محمسين كثير انه نرجع على السينما هلا ديفنتلي الستريمينج بلاتفورمز حيضلوا <تصفيق> وحيصير في اذا بدك بالانس بين الاثنين هلا تعودنا انه نقعد نحضر سيريز وافلام بالبيت بس الصراحه انه حسيت العالم بلشت تزهق كمان يعني انه بدها بدها شوي تغير الاكسبيرينس تبع السينما ما بيجي مثلها يعني بتذكر البريميرز كنا نعملهم انت بتعرف يعني وقت كنت yes. بال بكل شيء مارفل ودي سي بتعرف قديش الفان بيس كبيره بلبنان يعني والايفنتس اللي كنا نعملهم كانوا هيك بيجيبوا بيعملوا كوميونتي يعني هيك حلوه وبتذكر بتذكر اخر يعني اخر ايام كان في بريميرز وقت حضرنا جوكر سوا قديش كان في حماس والعالم بالسينما عم بتصرف عم تنبسط بعرف انه اوقات شوي بيزعجوا لنا القصص وقتها ويكون في كثير عجقه انا وياك هيك بدنا كنا نحكي بشيء هلا اشتقنا يكون كنا قاعدين بين 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 عالم وعم بيتحمسوا على على فيلم يعني اي نو مان وات اي مس ذا موست يعني وقت كنا نحضر افنجرز انفينيتي وور وافنجرز اند جيم والهيس والزئيف ذير ار سو ماني مومنتس ذات يو وونت تو بي سراوندد باي بيبل بتحضرهم بالبيت لحالك اتس نوت ذا فاكينج ثينج اتس نوت ذا سيم ثينج يعني جودزيلا فيرسز كونغ بدي اشوفه مع with an audience I'm, يعني I'm probably going to have to watch it at home بس I am dying to see it surround men like cheering yelling Kong beating the fuck out of Godzilla like that would be so fucking fun with an audience بحس حالي حمار قاعد عم بحضره بالبيت على TV قد ما تكون كبيرة I have a 55 inch TV still doesn't compare بال 90s بال 90s وقت نزل موجود كومبات اول فيلم بال 95 بتذكر احنا حضرناه بالسينما العالم كانت عم بتهيس يعني وكان هيك حماس وبعدنا لليوم بتذكرها لانه كان هيك عن جد كثير الجو مخيف وكنت عم بحكي مع 
مع السينماز وقت شفت التريلر تبع الفيلم الجديد موز كوم قلت لهم انه عن جد لو كان فينا نعمل بريمير كنا بنجيب اركيدز بنجيب نينتندو oh yeah. نعمل تورنمنت تورنمنت موز كوم قبل الفيلم يعني هالقصص صغيره كانت تنعمل هالجيمكس اذا بدك كانوا يحمسوا الفانز انه يجوا على البريمير بيضلوا يجوا على السينماز وهذا الشيء نحن اشتقنا له يعني بالنهايه ديفينتلي ستريمينج باقي حنقعد نحضر سيريز قد ما بدك بالبيت بس كمان في بارت من العالم حمسه ترجع تحت بلوك باسترز على الاي ماكس اي هير يو مان لو كمان اتس بيكمينج سورت اوف يعني هلا عم بينزلوا فين اتس اتس ا هايبريد موديل بينزل شوي ستريمينج ذن اكسكلوسيفلي سيني لايك ذير تيستينج اوت ديفرنت ثينجز اي وانت اسك يو ا كويشن انا اند ذن ايل جيف يو ماي انسر از ويل وات از ذا لاست موفي تتذكر وات از ذا لاست موفي انت حضرته بالسيني اكيد بتذكر لانه كانت اخر مره بروح فيها شو كان؟ آه كان ذا واي باك تبع بين افلك بتذكر هذيك السنه ذا باسكتبول جيم؟ ذا باسكتبول كان بيكون في هو كوتش آه باسكتبول وعنده مشاكل آه هيك بحياته وشوي آه اوكي انا حبيته بالبيت اي سو ات اي سو ات هوم حبيته لك هيدا الفيلم هيدا الفيلم خارج خارج ستريمينج صراحه هلا اللي شيء اللي شيء حسيته غير غير البرسبكتيف تبعي بهالسنه انه افلام مثل ذا واي باك في احضرهم بالبيت وما ما احس بالفرق صح آه وكمان حضرنا بتذكر اخر بريمير عملناها كانت بيردز اوف براي هذا كان اكبر فيلم اه انا قبل الباندميك اي ميس ذا انا ذا لاست موفي اي سو بالسينيه ستار وورز رايز اوف سكاي ووكر ذات واز ماي لاست فوكينج موفي بالسينيه انا ما حبيته سو لايك ذاتس واي ام ابسيت ام لايك ذا لاست موفي اي سو ان سينماز I was pretty disappointed with. So, so listen, I'm just waiting to go back to make up for that fucking Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, not three, man. Yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> One final question, Anis, before we let you go. You're the king of recommendations. You're the king of movie reviews, of TV reviews. Hit us with like a couple of streaming recommendations. Adin bil bech, fina nahdar hala. Ah, like I'm nahdar kiri osas. Ah, hek habet shway amel akhlot li zabadak recommendations tabai. Nahdarat fin series. Mexican series اسمها هوكل هوكل سارا ما بعرف اذا حضرتها انت هوك نو وير از ات اون نتفليكس؟ اون نتفليكس اي كل شيء ريكومنديشن حاطينهم على نتفليكس اي شيء بفتكر اذا بدك شوي اولد فاشن ريفانج ستوري يعني هيك واحد بيكون طالع من الحبس قتلوا له اخته من 18 ييرز حطوه هو بالحبس اذا بدك مع انه هو ما خصه كان بالموضوع وعم يجرب ينبش على العالم يعني قتلوا له اخته يعني هيك شوي تشيزي بس بنفس الوقت انه بصراحه حسيته هيك سوبر انتريجينج و ضلتني هيك محمس كفي لها اخر ابيزود يعني وفي كليف هانجر بالاخر بحمس العالم مشان سيزون 2 سو هيدا على نتفليكس السيريز الثانيه هي الدوكيومنتري اكشلي وبفتكر العالم بلشت تفوت بالجو اكثر فيها هي تبع الفورمولا 1 درايف تو سرفايف يس ام شور بروموتينج ات انا ام نوت ا فورمولا 1 جاي سو ما اي دينت كليك ات بس لوكس انتريستينج انا انا صار لي شي 10 سنين ماني حاضر صراحه بس هيدي السيريز حضرت اول تو سيزونز من شي ثلاث شهور وتحمست كثير اجى احضر ثالث سيزون نزيت هلا من شي جمعتين اوكي سو سيزون 3 اوكي سيزون 3 يعني اذا بدك هو اوفر فيو على كل سيزون يعني مثلا هلا بخبروك شوي شو صار عن البانديميك هذيك السنه بلس كيف رجعوا قلعوا من جديد بفرجوك ان ديبث اذا بدك انترفيوز مع الـ مع الكونستراكتورز مع الدرايفرز و وما في فلترينج يعني بتحسهم كلهم عم بيحكوا اللي عم بيحسوا فيه يعني اوقات بيكون مثلا الدرايفر عنده الـ 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 عنده مشاكل بالتيم تبعه بيقعد بيحكي عنهم عادي يعني مش كانه ما في ما في حدا عم يصوره يعني وهذا اللي حبيته فيه على السيريز وهيك بتحمس كثير يعني صراحه يلي بيحب او ما بيحب حينبسط فيها للدوكيومنتري ثالث ريكومنديشنز بلشتها هلا ريسنتلي هي نيو امستردام يلي هو شوي بيشبه جريز اناتومي بعرف العالم يقصد من هيك قصص especially انا يعني انا وقفت جريز من بعد سيزون 5 حسيته كثير دراما صراحه انا بس حسيت هيك انا وقفت جريز اناتومي when uh, Catherine Heigl's ghost boyfriend بلش يجي I was like all right I'm done There was a ghost ما بفتكر وصلت لهون There was a ghost George O'Malley can main character بفتكر مات بسيزون 5 so he gets hit by a bus I I remember that yeah 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 That was disturbing bro that was fucking disturbing Yeah على لك نيو امستردام اول تو سيزونز نزلوهم على نتفلكس هو بفتكر شو ان بي سي اذا ماني غلطان لهلا لهلا حسيته فيه اقل دراما من جريز وفيل جود شوي يعني يعني اوقات بتحس انه عم بحضر في كثير الميديكال كيسز اوقات بتكون كثير صعبه وبتحس انه انه اكيد هذا البيشنت حيموت او ما بعرف شو بس بتحس انه دائما في هوب يعني سو هذا اذا بدك هالهوب او هذا الشيء اللي ما كنا نشوفه كثير بجريز 
خلينا يكفي للشو هلا صرت حاضر يعني شي 10 ابيزودز من اول سيزون ومبسوط فيها والكاركترز كمان كثير هيك مهضومين و مانن مانن كثير دراماتيك يعني مثل مثل كريز فسو فار مبسوط فيها للسيريز وبنصح العالم يحضروها Awesome. طيب ليك اتس جود ثانك يو فور ريكومندينج سيريز اند انا جنرالي اي جيف ا لوت اوف موفي ريكومنديشنز وبيخلصوا بساعه ونص ساعتين سو ات ليست يو جيفينج بيبل سمثينج لونج تيرم ذات ذي كان واتش حتى حتى للعالم اللي كانوا يحضروا كثير موفيز مثل انه يعني هلا كثير عم بعمل انفستمنت بالسيريز يعني لانه بتحس انه انه في كونتنت اكثر على نتفليكس او حتى غير نتفليكس بهيدا بهيدا الشيء يعني غير غير الموفيز Uh, وبعرف انه انت حضرت كوبرا كاي كمان سو so بفتكر هيدا فاكينغ لاف كوبرا كاي كوبرا كاي ايه يا اللي منه حاضر كوبرا كاي لازم دفن فيها يا 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 هيت ذات شيت انا بيرسونلي هلا ذا اونلي ثينغ ام واتشينغ از فالكون اند وينتر سولجر ام بحضر يو نو ون ابيسود ا ويك ام بعمل لهم ريفيوز ام لافينغ ذات شو ار يو ام تحضر انا انا حضرت ذات فيرست ابيسود ما حضرت بعد الثاني ما بعرف ليش بلكي اليوم بحضرها سو فار مبسوط فيه بس حسيت انه ما في هايب قد ما كان على وندا فيجن ما بعرف انا هيك عم اشوف اتليست على السوشيال ميديا And I was less excited for it personally, but uh, I'm loving it. Yeah, the, the, so far, the two episodes really sold me. So I'm really enjoying the fuck out of it. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Anis, but I wanted to tell you thank you. Before I let you go, I wanted to let everyone who's watching know Anis is launching a new Instagram live series where every week you're going to have a guest from the entertainment industry, from the movie industry, TV industry, and you're going to have a live chat with them on Instagram in your first episode. It's coming out today. And today we're filming this on a Wednesday, but this is coming out on Thursday. So episode one is coming out at 8 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, your guest is Wissam Saliba. Tell us a little bit no, about, sh- about what you, you hope to do with the show, you know, moving forward. Ooh, how can people, f- oh, by the way, I'm going to have his Instagram in the description. So if you want to check out his show, just click on his Instagram account and you will, you will find him. I'm in the beginning, we wanted to do a movie court. We wanted to do a lot of interviews with filmmakers, with actors. او عالم بالانترتينمنت اندستري يعني حتى مره جبنا جبنا عالم ما خاصه بالسينما مع انه قعدنا حكينا معه انا عملنا كونفرسيشن ديسكشن هيك كثير مهضومه سو اي ام هوبينج مع السيريز اللي حاعملها هلا انه كمان ارجع اعمل نفس ال... مش نفس الفورمات بس يكون شوي انتراكتيف كمان مع الفانز تبع الاكتور او الفيلم اللي حيكون جاست معي سو so بدي اياهم يسالوا اسئله بدي اجرب هيك شوي كمان اخذ منه قصص يمكن مش حكيها قبل على التي في او شيء لان بتعرف دائما التي في في شويه فلترين كمان سو معنا نحن معنا نحن شوي بناخذ قصص هيك شوي بعيده عن عن جو التي في يعني ما رح نساله شو جديدك يعني للفنان يعني خلينا نفوت شو اكثر ديتيلز اكثر شو عم تحضر على نتفليكس مثل ما انت هلا عم تسالني هيك قصص بيهمني اعرف هالقصص يعني بحب اعرف الاكترز شو شو بيعملوا بالوقت وقت الفراغ تبعهم سو so, بفتكر هيك حيكون جو الفورمات الشو تبعي واكيد حنترك مجال للفانز انه يسالوا اسئله كمان. اوكي اوسم يعني انا نوينج انيس يعني هيز ون اوف ذا ريل ونز هيز ون اوف ذا او جي سوشيال ميديا بيبس عندنا بلبنان سو ديفينتلي يعني اي وود ريكومند يو تشيك ات اوت انيس ثانك يو سو ماتش فور تيكينغ ذا تايم ات واز ا بليجر ان شاء الله نشوفك قريبا ان بيرسون وي كان جو تو لايك سم فاكينغ موفي بريمير ونحضر لنا شي فيلم. اكزاكتلي مان ثانك يو مان ثانك يو عن جد في شغله بس بدي اقول لك اياها قبل ما ما فل. Go for it, shoot. Fuck you, Rina Gandur. Oh, <laughs> can I keep this in? Can I keep yes. it in? All right. Please. Yalla, if I go to prison, you're coming with me, motherfucker. Thank you, man. All right. Yalla, I'm right. Akbar. Amazing. Anis, <laughs> thank you so much, my guy. Pleasure. Thanks, man. Yalla, see you. Bye. All right. Thanks again to Anis for coming on. It was a lot of fun talking to him. Please don't forget to follow his Instagram to check out his Instagram live uh, that's starting this week. And leave a comment. Let me know what is the last movie you guys saw in theaters and what do you guys think about the possibility of movie ticket prices going up? All that sort of weird stuff. So, yeah. Whew, thank you so much for watching this episode. It's been a blast. I know this was a longer one, but I mean, I, I loved my conversation with Anis. Uh, I feel like it could have been its own separate video. Guys, please like this video. Leave a comment. Let me know about what you thought about the whole sponsorship thing. Uh, Yasmina's amazing video. Yusuf's horrible video. Uh, my conversation with Anissa. I'd love to hear your thoughts about all this stuff. Uh, leave your comments. Again, your engagement has been ex- incredibly helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Become a Do Not Warrior. We just crossed the 2,000 subscriber mark and we're now headed towards 3,000. What I like to call, I love you 3,000. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again to the network for sending me the awesome headphones. I really appreciate it, guys. It was very kind of you. Uh, Guys, do not worry.